That hey, instead of kick it, you should say ah. <laughs> Na 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 na. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just shake the rim. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, how about we just kick it? Kick it. Are we going? Oh, we've been going. <laughs> Welcome to Hard Headed, episode uh, something or other. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've got with me today Troy, three shot trestle. Chet, City Boy Sears, <laughs> and as always with you, Matt, yeah. Country Boy. Country Boys Amos. can survive when they're five miles from a Walmart. Hey, we'll have to save that for later because uh, I'm just complaining about your board that's behind us. So just to kick things off, if anybody can read that little whiteboard back there, it does say not. He just scribbled it out into really, really small letters. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's where we're at. And uh, we're starting today with Troy. What's on your mind? What is on my mind? Well, um, it's been in the news a few weeks, maybe months, but it's really just I've uh, been researching it lately uh, because I follow, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, okay? And I follow some YouTube channels around, you say. around Star Wars, and uh, I'm a huge nerd uh, when it comes to that stuff. Uh, and recently... Uh, someone was fired because of their views and such that they were posting out on Twitter. And uh, so it's part of the cancel culture mm -hmm. that's going on. And uh, the actress I'm talking about is uh, Gina Carano. Carano, I believe is how you pronounce her name. Uh, she plays Cara Dune in the Mandalorian series. Mm -hmm. And she was recently fired um, because of her views on just in life and she's uh conservative and uh yeah so it all ultimately like the last straw was a meme about nazis or something yeah so she posted a meme and it was a uh, jewish person running away from a nazi um back way back when and her stance or what she was trying to invoke people was to think yeah. and uh what she was saying was uh kind of the cancel culture that we have going on is kind of like so the nazis didn't have to go you know well hey, they got they got their neighbors to turn on the jews right basically basically yeah. so, so people were turning each other in and exactly she's they, like hey let's quit ratting people out yeah quit turning on your neighbors and ratting them out so they get in trouble basically. And so she got a backlashing for it on, you know, on from the leftists. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So she, she's posted some other things, uh, that really just get people to think about their views on certain situations. And of course there are people out there that just take them and run with them the completely wrong way and the wrong meaning that she had behind the post in general. Right. So, and I just feel like the, the way that it was handled through Lucasfilm, um, and I've loved star Wars my whole life. And so, you know, when I hear a company that, that I support and, you know, watch their movies and that kind of thing, do this to one of their people. So I'm going to translate his definition of loved whole life and support. There's a fan club membership involved, Matt. There was. There was. Okay. Like legit fan club. Very well. Got All weekly right. newsletters. But I'm with you, man. Well, rule number one, and I this may be top, you know, we, uh, a future top three rules to live by. One of those would be never compare anything to Nazis. It never goes anywhere good. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. That's just something you just don't do. I don't mind talking about the real Nazis and all that kind of stuff and saying how bad they were and all this, but let's just use other examples when we're going to try to pick an example of modern society. And you're thinking about that, Matt. Yeah. I don't see a problem with it. I'm just saying, don't do it. Like, well, uh, I don't know. I would say if you're going to do it, come out and say what you're going to say. Cause I think that was where she messed up. Shit. 
didn't come out and say she got people wanted people to think about it well, and kind of make the their meme, own the views. meme culture is not to say what you want to say let the meme right do say the what work. it says yeah. yeah um yeah so i i'm not gonna blame everybody for that but at the same time that it's just like using an overused cliche just don't do the nazi thing but i'm with you and, and i think uh, you know bill burr came out because he starred in one of the mandalorian episodes and yeah uh, he he's came like, out this and- is dumb you yeah. know, she's a great person and we shouldn't be doing stuff like this. And I wholeheartedly agree. I think we ought to be able to let people have their own views. Whether or not I agree with them is my issue and not anybody else's to live around when they, when their opinions of political persuasion, if we want to talk about behaviors that impact other people's livelihoods and lives, then, you know, maybe we ought to, I have a different opinion, but if you want to hold an opinion that is just an opinion, go for it. Yeah. Even Bill Maher got behind her and he made a few jokes about it, but he was kind of, this is dumb kind of on the side of, we shouldn't be canceling people because of this. And, and and as a person that is conservative, there's been many, a many, a many a year where the conservatives are trying to shut down people. I I mean, we can't avoid talking about that. Yeah. Um, and it seems like that coin has flipped now that there's the, the people on the other side of the coin are the ones trying to shut down speech and behavior. And I'm not okay with it. Wasn't okay with it back when. Not okay with it now. Yeah, I'm not either. Thank you for your input, man. You're welcome. I've got, I've got a, uh, it's, it's fine because i got a lot I could say a, a, about that. We, I don't know if we have enough time. If you only had a, a medium that people could use to say things. <laughs> well, I, I know that I, I mean, we were always kept to kind of a, a time crunch, but, uh, you know, along with the cancel culture deal, I mean, just in the last week, what are, what are we, what are we canceling this week? We've, uh, canceled Mr. Potato head. We've canceled, uh, uh, Dr. Seuss, or we're attempting to cancel Dr. Seuss. Um, and I've got friends on both sides of the coin that are upset about that. They're like, you guys are literally destroying the democratic party. Uh, with with all this cancel culture stuff, you know, and I'm like, well, good, you know, and I was like, because the the Republican Party right now is kind of in shambles and the Democratic Party's in shambles. And so mm-hmm. maybe now is a time where we can get some good, solid leaders to that actually are represent the people and not represent ideas, but they represent actual people with ideas. I hope I don't see that happening, but because there where there's a will there's a way yeah i i I did see it was funny when you're talking about memes because i did see one today and it says name one time in history where people banning books were on were on the right side and uh i was like perfect yes you know because i don't i mean we're what what are we doing we're we're denying that something actually exists i mean you're just going to make believe that it's not there yeah 100 percent agree with you but at the same time I haven't seen anybody change the way that they vote. It seems like that when people still get in the voting booth, that's like, Oh, I recognize that name. I'm going to reelect them. So, you know, that, that the the people being upset with it and people being different, like, like what, what's going to happen in Texas with all the people from California moving there? Is it, are are all the people from California going to turn into the, these Texas behaving people, or are they going to turn Texas into a California legislative body yeah, my opinion is it's going to be texas little, is going to lose little california yeah. yeah yeah because people they're running away from what they voted for but they're going to vote from what from what they've always voted for what they've always voted for or i guess so. land size wise big big california would be texas because it's bigger than california <laughs> yeah either way whatever because i know i know uh we got a buddy uh, up in montana that uh calls uh, some of the cities up there little little california and he just doesn't go there yeah. So there are little Californians they're everywhere. Running. They're running. They're running away from the state, but I don't think they're changing their behavior or their political They're like, views oh man, this their... place sucks. Let's go somewhere else and do the exact same thing because yeah. mm, that's that, makes, great. that makes sense, right? Well, they must already be here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we have issues in Kansas with government handouts to a specific industry that, you know, we can, we can go the wrong way at any given time because incentives and subsidies and oh are we talking about a certain thing that blows no i'm not i'm not oh i'm talking about wind because yeah that that stuff's whatever we'll save yeah we'll save that for a what's on my mind as long as you don't think we should break it (laughs) 
So one more okay. thing. I, I'm, I'm still just really pissed off at Lucasfilm. Um, if you're going to fire somebody, grab some cojones and just fire them. She found out through her Twitter feed that she was fired. That, uh, yeah. Through the, her own Twitter feed. The, yeah, that's that's not even professional. Like, no, that, that's, it's not. That's cheap. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any good words to say about that. Yeah. Effective so. communication and finding out something through Twitter is not a good way. It's, it's like, uh, I mean, this day and age, like if you had an office job, you would literally be walking into the break room and being like, Hey man, I'm sorry to hear about what happened. And you're like, what? And, oh, oh, you, you got fired. <laughs> I saw on the social <laughs> yeah. medias that you got fired. Didn't that some, happen on some, the some, office? The HR guy was <laughs> in your, uh, in your office boxing everything up. You're like, ah, I just went to the bathroom. Oh man. Yeah. That's, that's low Lucasfilm. You guys stink for that. Yeah. Whoever that person is should be brought into an office and fired. Whoever is responsible for letting that get out. Uh, apparently it's Kathleen Kennedy. And see ya, she's Kathleen. not on the docket yet to get fired. So, but we'll see. We'll keep checking the Twitter feed. That's right. <laughs> keep checking your Twitter feeds, folks. <laughs> I'll just tweet it out and make it reality. Hashtag. Ooh, ooh. There, ha- there was a hashtag fire Kathleen no, Kennedy. No, 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 no. Did you hear that Kathleen Kennedy got fired? Oh. <laughs> you, so you just you yeah. automatically jump to it and then it becomes fact, right? Yeah. It there doesn't matter if it's true or not. It's the Twitter mob. The Twitter mob rules the world right now. That's we, right. We can put it out there and just make it true. Yeah. Just like Rocket Mortgages or it could be the next GameStop. You hear about uh, that? No. Stocks? No? Okay. We won't go there. Yeah, I, you lost me on I, that. I've, been, I've not been paying attention to the stocks because they've been tanking over the last week. So yeah, it's been, a, been bad. Now's, now's your time to buy, I think. Yep. Hopefully it comes back. You know, our attorneys just told us to don't take any advice from us on past stock performance. <laughs> You're, you know, my trade top at your own one, risk. My, my, Matt does not know everything. <laughs> my, my top, my top one's still performing very well, but I have lost a little bit on a, a couple of them. You haven't but lost anything till you sell it. I'm still losing. You haven't made anything. My money's you sell in there. Either. My money's in there. Yeah. Keep thinking that. And we are on our top three today, which is. Top three, shotguns. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> you you uh, like we, that? That's we could have downloaded something here, but no, no. no. that was perfect. Acapella is better. <laughs> All right, who's, who's going first? I'll go first because I'll go second. Y'all probably know a lot more about shotguns than I do, but actually, I, do, I know how to shoot them really well. Three times in a row, baby. That's right, three you've had a lot shots. of pra- you've had a lot more practice than we have. Yes. You've been out fewer times, but you've had more practice. (laughs) Very true. All right. So number three on my list is the Mossberg 935. Okay. Because I've had it and shot many ducks, many pheasant. Well, I wouldn't say many pheasant. Few pheasant. Few dead pheasant on the way down. Three times. Yeah. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. If it's in the air, it's It's going to get get shot shot at at three times. Um. But yeah, the Mossberg is a semi-automatic, and my dad got it for me. when he got us both guns one year. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the the one, one I got. Nice, it was not the Mossberg 935. Yeah. So anyway, it's uh, been a good gun. It's uh, had a few issues. It shoots three inch and three and a half inch only, not two and three quarter. And if you shoot two and three quarter, it won't eject the shell. So you have to. Then it becomes a single shot. Sing, yeah. And then. Troy is not as effective. It becomes more like it becomes more like pre-shot. a pump. More yeah, like a pump, pretty much. So yeah, great gun. Uh, have enjoyed it. Still use it. Uh, so then number two, it's just a good over under shotgun because they can be used for many things. Any over under? Um, yeah, because I don't own an over under. I always yeah. borrow yours. Yeah. Uh, and I have one actually in my closet that my father-in-law let me bought, borrow. It's called the Double Defense. It's like a sawed-off over-under, long, yeah, tactical. The, a shorter barrel that's still 18 and a half inches. But yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, and it's got like a flashlight on the end. And no it's way. Like Is it side-by-side? Side? It's over-under? It's an over-under. No way. Yeah. I need to see that next time I come over. Double Defense on it. Yeah. So don't come breaking into my house because I'm going to shoot you with that three, three times. times. <laughs> <laughs> Probably missed with two, but. And then the number one. Uh, well, while oh. we're talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? I do have a legendary story of shooting three shots, killing four quail 
out of a covey of coil with a single single break action 20 gauge epic so I, I i believe you on your three shots out of a out of a double barrel yeah i i'm i can load that fast yeah okay um yeah so then number one the remington model 870 preferably made for a left-hander so the shells don't eject across my face um which i don't have that either but it's yeah. on my wish list so because i'm looking to re- replace the mossberg i got you man so i am a fan of the 870 yeah we'll talk more about that later i bet we will foreshadowing that's right matt what you got actually i think chet should go next okay really because yeah. you, you you're gonna see what mine i'll start i'll start with number three the uh, winchester model 12 anybody familiar with that one yes a pump pump, pump gun designed by john browning ah. well actually they uh they had a dude stole or used modified the uh a browning design a hammered pump shotgun and made it hammerless tc johnson was his name but uh 1912 is when that that gun came out hence the model 12 and i've got one i love it i inherited it from my mom's dad it's in 16 gauge which is pretty sweet and uh it's served in world war one world war two korean war and the vietnam war so it was a service weapon for all of those bought by the u.s government and they're uh, over two million sold a lot of them out there still pick them up at pawn shops it's a great workhorse of a pump shotgun Number two, the Ithaca Model 37, another pump gun, another gun that I own in 16 gauge that I got from my dad's dad, which is pretty sweet. I got those backwards. My dad's dad was a Model 12. My mom's dad was Ithaca 37. The uh, also um, uh, John Browning design that that ended up being modified. It was actually based off of a Remington uh, pump shotgun that uh, had some patents expire, so Ithaca picked it up. Uh, great. This is a gun. It's, uh, I have a featherweight model, and you can carry that thing all day. It's really light. It packs a little bit of a kick, but um, it's awesome, and it ejects out the bottom. Ah. And So right-hander and left-hander. Yeah, but the safety and some of the controls are for right-hand. I don't ah, know if you can swap those of course. out or not. But yeah, always it's, friendly, uh, it's a friendly gun to have in the blind <laughs> because it does – Throw the shells out the bottom. You don't have to worry about who's to your left or right for that. Another gun that's had about 2 million sold. And my number one is the Remington 870. Um, I have, um, actually my son is the one using the one that your dad got me. Um, he uses it on the, uh, for his trap team. He shoots trap for the high school. He loves it. And I, heck, I love that gun. I've been under the water. I actually froze it. One time, <laughs> yes. um, 16 degrees, and I uh, took a swim uh, on a duck hunt, and uh, I had to put that thing up in the sunlight, and so it'll start. It would start thawing out. My buddy Davin was actually letting me. We'd share his shotgun, so a group of ducks come in, and I'd shoot uh, with his gun. And then he'd get it back, and then the next group of ducks come in, he'd get shots at that. And then by the time I, the trigger mechanism thawed out from sunlight, then uh, that 870 was back working. Same hunt. How many? Ducks did y'all bag that day? Uh, quite a bit. Nice. Yeah. That was yeah. back when the lake, when, when we had the drought and the lake was, you know, the, you could just see the bank from the water's edge to the trees was like 200 yards. And we were out in the water yeah. and ducks were everywhere. That's awesome. Was like, that Cheney Lake? Yeah. When it was way down? Yeah. So we're not talking, we're talking maybe eight years ago, nine years ago? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. It was a good day. It was cold though. Don't, don't wear cotton when you duck hunt just so no. you know. but anyway it, all all of these guns actually were, have been in the military the the 870 was actually released in 1950 so it's the newer of all the models that i've talked about and there's a bunch of people that designed it um and it is the most manufactured shotgun ever and they've sold over 11 million of them and they it's still still in production so the ethica the model 12 went out decades ago uh, the ithaca model 37 has been up and down ithaca's the company itself has had problems 
um, changing hands and whatnot, but it's still in production today, but they're pretty expensive. And then, uh, the 870, man, that thing, big green still running those out, even though they've round two on bankruptcy, fine shotgun. If, uh, that's the one, you know, people ask, you know, if I need to get a gun, if, if they don't have a gun, just go get a Remington 870. If you need it for self-defense, that's self-defense. If you want to duck hunt, if you want to shoot sporting plays, if you want, if you need an all around gun that does just every, just about everything that you need, then Remington 870, a lot of deer hunters up, you know, up North when you can't hunt with a rifle, use it as a slug gun. You can get slug barrels for them. I mean, there's, it's just a great gun. Well, there, there are a lot of options. Are you done? <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get my Remington. <laughs> well, the only reason I ask if you're done is because uh, number three on my list is the Remington 870. Okay, so I'll start at the bottom, work to the top. Yeah, but uh, I I do agree that it it it's awesome shotgun. It was the very first shotgun uh, that that I owned. Uh, my family, like I said uh, before, my family didn't hunt or anything like that, and so I saved up all my all my pennies, all my birthday money all my Christmas money. And the uh, first shotgun that I bought was a Remington 870 Express Magnum. And you still have it? I still have it. That's awesome. And uh, so, um, and now, you know, and I bought it back th- back in the day because I wanted to get into deer hunting, but I didn't have enough money to buy a deer rifle. And so I was like, well, shoot, that that uh, that slug barrel for it, you know, was I think at the time maybe 150 bucks maybe, yeah. you know, if that. And shoot, bolt that thing right on. It's got the sights on it and just go to town. And, uh, you know, now they've got, you know, different stocks that you can put on it for, yep. you know, for adjustable stocks, for making it shorter, longer, um, you know, making it all, you know, tack it out to be a home defense gun or switch the barrels out and go out and, and, and shoot ducks or, or quail or doves yeah. or whatever you want. And, uh, I, I dunked mine, um, as well, uh, on a duck hunt, I was too lazy to go around the boat to, uh, to grab something. And so instead of going around the boat, I leaned over the edge and my shotgun went bloop right down to the bottom <laughs> and uh it, when you're wearing waders and you're in four feet of water when you're trying to fish a fish when, a gun out of the, off the you, bottom well yeah when you're trying to bend over and then you get water in your waders yeah. it just turns into a bad day but uh <laughs> real quick <laughs> pulled pulled that thing out and then of course that mud from the bottom of that that uh that pool wherever we were at yeah. it was in missouri somewhere and uh you know i mean it it marred up the the stock you know and the stock is all messed up now but no, no pitting or anything like that, but it just it gave it a nice little, I'll call it a patina yeah. on the, uh, on the stock and the, the, the foregrip, but, uh, definitely a very solid, well-made, almost indestructible shotgun. Uh, and not that expensive. Yeah. I, I mean, they're still not that expensive. Yeah. I mean, I think they're up to 300 bucks now. And when I bought mine, I think they were 150, yeah. something like that. But, uh, no, great, great gun. So that's why I kind of wanted to cut you off so I could at least get my, you could, you could just join the conversation. No, no, <laughs> that would be too much of an agreement with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the second one on my list, I, uh, although we, so whenever we go back and shoot sporting clays again, eight seventies, eight seventies, we can do that. Yeah. He just cut you off by the way. He did. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I joined the I'm conversation. Used <laughs> I'm used to it. I joined the conversation. That's, that's how he politely joins a conversation. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, excuse me. No, <laughs> Uh, hey, I was just gonna interrupt you again. Were you? <laughs> Can I give you a? Never mind. Yeah, dude, turn the mic down. Yeah, I'm gonna turn your mic down. There's a mute button. There, <laughs> I see it. it. It's tempting me. Uh, number two on my list you. is going to be the Browning Maxis. It's a uh, it's a newer shotgun. Um, yeah, came, came out eight nine maybe eight or nine years mm-hmm. ago. Um, I, I bought it uh, on its first run. And same same kind of thing with the uh, with the Remington. It's a really smooth uh, shooting gun. It it hits a lot less uh, than that 870. As as I started to get uh, nicer shotguns in in my collection, I noticed just how hard that 870 does hit. Dude, it can. Uh, you got a I, mine's a three and a half inch chamber, and it it hurts. It punches. It backs yeah. a punch. And you know when you when you start talking about semi automatic shotguns and they have the gas system because it kind of dissipates some of that recoil yep. a little bit where is on that pump. I mean, you're taking the full the full force. But uh the Brownie Maxis I've I've killed a lot of stuff with that. Uh, I've been uh uh stopped by the game warden for uh uh hunting unplugged. Um you were with me on that one. That was my that was my Maxis when I was hunting <laughs> with that. That's a great story too, so, by the way. 
so we were uh, uh, chet and i were up dove hunting and uh, uh i'd been out doing a pheasant hunt the the week before and so on on this pheasant hunt it was released birds and you didn't have to use a choke or a, a, a plug and so i had my plug in the gun and i was like well i'm having to reload this thing too much and so i wanted to put you know all all the rounds in the in the tube and be able to shoot without having to stop as often and so i took my plug out and i put it in the the uh visor or my sunglass holder in my truck so i was like i'm not going to lose it there and and closed it up <laughs> and then uh kind of a spur of the moment wasn't really planned went uh went dove hunting and uh we're out there in the field and and uh shooting you know i mean uh uh chet sunstone had, had shot uh, one bird i think is what we'd had at the time and uh, here comes the game warden you know i'm like whatever you know i checked all the time you know no problem i was like i never i, I don't even have a shotgun without a plug in it you know because i just leave them all in there and uh he came up and he's checking everybody's guns and i take out you know because i only had one round in the tube and or uh, one round of the chamber and two in the tube and so i eject the rounds i hand him my three shells and then he takes those three shells and goes shoo, shoo, shoo. he's like <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, well, <laughs> well, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm like, that wasn't supposed to happen. He goes, no, it wasn't. And uh, <laughs> so he's like, uh, do you have a plug for this thing? And I was like, thought it was in there. I thought it was in there, but apparently it's not. And I was like, you know, I was hunting, you know, last week on a on a private uh, deal on a on a pheasant hunt, and I took it out to uh, so I could get more rounds in. For those and, of you who don't know. Uh, migratory birds have a federal regulation where you're only allowed to have three shots in your shotgun. So the plug that Matt's talking about goes in the shotgun magazine to prevent more than two rounds going into the magazine of the gun. So you have one in the chamber or two in there. So those, those of you that may not know what we're talking about right now, legally, you're, you're only allowed to have it where two shells could go in yeah. a magazine. Yeah. If that wasn't the case, I'd probably be six shot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyway, he, he, uh, he's like, well, I'm going to go check these other guys in the field and then I'll be back. And so I was like, well, no, he didn't. That's what he said. Well, he said, I don't have my ticket book with me. We're going to have to walk back and get it. Oh yeah. So, well, okay. Because so, one of the best lines that I still, that when I tell the story, this is the thing that cracks me up. The parking area for this field <laughs> that we were hunting was half mile from the field that we can hunt but the difference it, it was like there was a road to the field that you can hunt and they just had a sign a half mile up that says no vehicles beyond this point but there's a road so i was like man we got stools we got bags we got all this stuff and uh, you know look i'm i'm driving back i'm gonna drop you matt off i'm gonna drop stone off you guys get set up and then i'll go park the truck so we did that like went out dropped everything off and drove back well when the game warden is out there he's like hey we're gonna have to walk back to the to the truck at the parking area to get my ticket book <laughs> he looked at matt and he's like can you make it to the truck <laughs> and matt's like i got out of here didn't i i mean he was upset he's like i got out of here didn't i <laughs> and then, and then the, the walk back in the walk back his heart started to soften because it was a straight up i'm writing you a ticket well yeah. let's go get my ticket book yeah, so we, we went, well, no, because uh, he came back. He's like, I'm going to go check all these other yeah. guys, and then I'm going to come back. And so he came back, and by that time, I'd shoved like a corn stalk uh, up, in the, up in the tube to where you couldn't jam a, another round in there. So you couldn't jam the third round in there. But So he picked it up, and he goes, ooh, that's a little squishy. That's a little <laughs> squishy. And I was like, man, whatever. If you're going to give me a ticket, just give me a ticket. So yeah, he's like, I all right, well, here, didn't I? he's like, well, we just uh, we need to walk back to my truck. And so I was like, all right. And, uh, so I, you know, I, I make it look as difficult as I possibly can. Like I'm picking up my bucket and my shotgun and everything else. And I'm, I'm trudging along <laughs> and I mean, we get 200 yards into that and he's like, he looks over at me and he's like, do you want me to carry some of that? And I was like, no, I'm good. But he's just starts taking, like, now I've got the game word carrying my shotgun. <laughs> he's carrying my bucket and I'm just walking. And I'm like, this is, this is all right. That's awesome. And then, uh, we get to the truck and, uh, he goes, uh, uh, he, he, he basically, he wrote me a warning, you know, he, he was, he was a, he was a nice guy. I lost, you still have that picture. I took a picture. I'm like over there, my, you know, you know, taking pictures of Matt and <laughs> yeah, the so, game warden with a ticket book. So out. The game warden's got the ticket book. I'm leading on the side of the truck. And, uh, I actually, you sent me that picture. I turned it into a meme and, 
and it kind of goes along with that dosi keys or is it the dosi keys guy yeah i don't always yeah, yeah. Uh, you know but when i do yeah so i don't always <laughs> uh I don't always go shotgunning, but when I do, it's unplugged. Yeah, and this, that was my that was my little meme for that. But uh, so that was that was kind of fun. But that so was that was my Browning Maxis. The Browning Maxis is that when you you're uh, tied for third big trophy over here too? No, that's the next gun that I'm oh, going to okay. get to. But that's not a tied for third. That's a <laughs> best office shooter of all time lifetime award. That that is my lifetime award. What do you? Let me borrow his pen. All right, you borrow that pen. <laughs> So uh, the number one shotgun on my list is uh, probably the most recent shotgun I bought, and it is a, uh, a Beretta A400 XL Black Gold Edition. And uh, this gun uh, was designed by Michelangelo back in uh, 1492. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the XL. Yeah. Has, <laughs> well, I don't know. You had all the all the names of all the people that designed your gun, so I just figured I'd make well, it sound I, good. I, think I don't know if Michelangelo, but I mean, it is a work of art. I think it's pretty awesome. Like the the guy John Browning and and the firearm, basically industry. the king of all fire. Yeah, and and we all we you are, you mentioned Browning, you know, a Browning branded shotgun, and John Browning founded that organization. Mm -hmm. I mentioned two different manufacturers with guns that were designed primarily by john browning like the guy is a firearms genius that's that's why yeah. i want to bring that up it's just it's phenomenal no I, I get that but i just wanted to thank you bring a little bit of levity to yeah. the situation right yeah. i but, know how uh, to use google so the uh <laughs> but the uh, the beretta a400 xl so if you if you go to the store and look at it i mean it's the ugliest gun that you'll possibly ever look at it's got a blue receiver uh, and basically just looks like a big old toy yeah but uh one of the uh, uh places here in town um that i've uh, get guns from um, they had a custom edition that was done for them it's called the black gold edition and it's all black and silver so that that receiver is now black and silver and it looks awesome and the uh, butt stock actually has a kick stop on it so when you're shooting you don't even really feel that recoil at all it absorbs uh, basically all of that recoil a lot of sporting clay shooters yeah and I, trap I, shooters and that's what yeah. i bought it for a sporting clays and trap uh, yeah. specifically to do that with and it's been a phenomenal gun i've had uh, no problems with it uh, other than the first time that I took it out, uh, well, I want to say the second time I took it out, uh, uh, it was, a uh, another guy that went out with me and, and, uh, he was driving the, uh, the golf cart at the sporting clays range and he turned the corner too quick and dumped my brand new shotgun out and scratched it all up. <laughs> but, uh, uh, she still runs. Uh, I ended up, uh, I've won a here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I've won a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've, I've won a, uh, I actually won a timeshare in Colorado with it. And uh, I've, nice. won, I've won basically all the prizes because uh, it was actually Steve and I that got brought in to do this charity uh, shotgun shoot. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that they think that the pastor brought in just straight up ringer ringers uh, to win this whole thing and which wasn't the case at all he just invited us out and we said sure we'd love to come and, and support your organization and your, win all the prizes yeah your ministry and so <laughs> we get out there and, and steve wins the uh, the longbird competition which was like a i mean i mean that clay had to be out there 100 yards or something like that and you know trying to shoot that steve smoked that um i won the wobble stand and then uh overall we were best team and we had two guys that had never even shot clays before <laughs> and, they didn't even bring a gun <laughs> and and then uh, they didn't need uh, it we we put you know because we wanted to support the organization and uh so we bought a bunch of raffle tickets and then we ended up winning almost all the raffle items too we, i mean by the end of it i mean we were loaded up and just like i don't know if we're going to be invited back but uh we we have been but that's been my beretta experience and, and that's just a phenomenal gun and love it and it's one i use for pretty much everything uh, with the exception of ducks uh, because it doesn't take a three inch shell. It's two and three quarter only. Yeah. Awesome. A well-rounded top three from you, Matt, and is valid because you had the Remington 870 on there. You got to have the 870 on there. We all three had it. I mean, that's, that's right just on. The, that's pretty much everybody I know. It's that's a staple. Their, that's their first gun. Most, most everybody I know is that 870. So I'd kind of like to get, a 16 gauge 870 because then I'd have all three of the best pump guns ever in 16 gauge. That would be pretty sweet. And you might be able to find ammo a little more easily. Like a, 
a, a 16 gauge Wingmaster. I don't even know if they make them, but that would be awesome. 870 Wingmaster. That so was, that was a pretty gun too. You draw my name for Christmas this year. Mm. You know mm. what to get. That sounds like a. Uh, best we we have a fifty dollar limit in our family, right? <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> Just uh, buy an entry into a sporting place competition for Matt, and you're guaranteed to win. There you answer. go. Pretty much, I am. I am pretty <laughs> awesome. So. Uh, the one the one shotgun that I did not uh, put on the list is technically not a shotgun, but uh, is a pistol. And I just came back from uh, Florida. The judge. And I got to do a quell hunt for two days with a, uh, a group of warriors. And uh, I mean, I, I don't want to toot my own horn. <laughs> toot, toot. <laughs> Never stopped you before. <laughs> but uh, we were out there hunting. How big the, is the trophy you bought for that? I haven't made it yet, but it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be big. Uh, but the, uh, the guide was like, uh, it looks like these birds are getting a little bit too easy for you to knock down. He goes, yeah. do you want it? Do you want a little bit more of a challenge? And I said, yeah, I'm always down for a little bit of a challenge. And so he hands me the judge with some 410 shells in it. And, uh, for, for those who don't know, 410, uh, or the judge is basically a 410 or a 45 long Colt, uh, pistol, uh, revolver. And, uh, so I loaded it up and dogs got on point and they sent the flush dog in Flush dog got the bird, and I raised up, and I mean, I smoked him, smoked him, <laughs> and I was like, "See, I mean, you can't give me something that I can't shoot." Yeah. You know? And I was like, and then I just put the gun away. I was like, "I'm done. Right, we're done. I'm done. One Nothing shot, else to show you guys. One shot, one kill. I've done it all. Let's save some birds for these other guys that haven't done this before. You know, because I'm a nice guy. You know. There you go. But uh, no, really, really good time, and uh, just goes to prove that I am the ultimate shotgun or bird killer remains to be seen at this table yeah not i'd like, the, I'd no, like to see that demonstrated <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to do a special episode where we go out and do that and i can prove it to you uh we've been out no yeah. we've, we've already gone over sandbagging this. Matt, we, sandbag he, he it was a sandbag it, it was a sandbag and I, I wish you guys would acknowledge <laughs> acknowledge my sandbag and stop trying to cancel me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway nice good yeah. times good top three uh like you said solid all the way around uh so moving on to a good word for today and chet has the good word good word of the day is hope uh, i came across an article by david mathis uh from a, on the desiring god website uh titled it's okay to be hopeful and uh you know i think you know it, his framing of the discussion and the conversation was that and there's, there's really not a whole lot going on that is hopeful right now, you know, pandemic and stocks and gas prices and every, everything just seems to be going in the wrong direction. But for believers, uh, he kind of got into, you know, the, the hope that's there. And, and typically when we use the word hope in our vernacular, it's a thin hope. That's how he described it. It's a thin hope. I hope it doesn't rain today. I hope that, you know, this my truck starts when it's this cold outside i hope you know th this kind of thing but if you I look at my legs charged when i wake up today <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i uh, hope i still have a charger at the desk at work you know <laughs> those kinds of things but um if you go back in scripture and you know in corinthians the chapter the, the first corinthians chapter 13 is the chapter on love right but it ends mm -hmm. Uh, in verse 13 with, uh, you know, faith, hope, and love. And, and when we talk about love, we, we know how serious and, and all encompassing that is, you know, true love. Uh, we talk about faith, you know, our, our faith that we have is, is it's grounded and rooted in something that's, um, not thin, if you will, but typically how, and when we talk about love and we talk about faith, those are, have a lot of meat, have a lot of weight to it. But really when we talk about hope these days, it's not that weighted as faith, hope, and love. Like that hope just isn't that. And if you go back through and he talks about going back and, and looking through the New Testament, that it's evident that that hope was very powerful. And the hope for the future, the hope for what's coming um, was extremely powerful. And the two books of the Bible that really, of the New Testament, that really speak to doing good things um, you know, you, you get into, uh, Titus and then, and first Peter about doing good works, uh, for people, um, actually anchor those good word works in, in our hope 
And then, so you get to thinking about that and he does a really good job of breaking this down. And it really spoke to me, you know, if, if we didn't have hope, then why do anything for anybody? Right? Like if, 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 if we really felt that the outlook was so bad and that things are not going to be getting better, there's not a, a, a good thing that's coming, then what's our motivation? And if you look at the New Testament church and those people in those times and how powerful that hope was, you know, they, they knew, uh, their hope was rooted in Christ and therefore, like it says in Titus, then go do something, right? Let's go, let's go help people. Let's, let's, let's go show love to people. Um, and, and I think, you know, this, it's, uh, I'll, I'll just read a little passage out of this, you know, that, that. Hope was not flimsy, fleeting, or uncertain. Rather, they, the, they the, the apostles of the early church, spoke of a well-founded faith with a future orientation. Their hope, rooted in faith, was knowledge of the truth. So something that you can grasp, the knowledge of, of the truth that, that was looking forward. And what is remarkable and perhaps regularly overlooked is how powerful, how catalytic, how transformative such a true hope can prove to be. So while we're in this time of thinking there's not much hope, um, you know, rooted in scripture, rooted in Christ. We know that there is a future and, and, a, and a good things that are coming um, ultimately. And in that power that we have faith in that, that we know that, then that should shift our attitude to not being one of lackadaisical attitude or not putting in an effort to make society better or to help our fellow man that the hope that we have should spur us on to make things better, to be active, to go do things that are going to have an impact on people's lives. And I think this is a lot, uh, you know, really more from a person to person perspective. I'm not talking about, you know, Troy, you should go run for office to give people hope, yeah. but it's, it's like, who's your neighbor and how can you help that person? And, and what can you do from being motivated and knowing that there's hope that you can go, okay, well it is worth spending this extra time with this person. It is worth pulling over on the side of the road to help that person with a flat tire. There's, you know, and those instances provide a catalyst for those people, um, to, to really have an impact there. And if you think, um, back in Colossians, and this is a pretty popular verse as well, um, really that's, that's what spurs people on to ask questions. And in chapter one, verse four through five, it says, since we've heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven of this, you've heard before the word, the word of the truth is the gospel. So, um, people understand and question you for why do you have hope? Like that should be something that's different in this day and age in this time, if you have hope and you behave in a way that has hope, people are going to wonder what in the heck, why, why do you have hope with, with all this pandemic stuff that's going on? So anyway, that's, that's my good word. You should be hopeful and knowing that good things are going to come for those that believe. I like it. Should always be ready to share that hope too with others. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I think that, uh, that actually kind of goes along a lot with uh, uh, a lot of, of guys that are um, suffering from PTSD. Yeah. I think that there's a lack of hope. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I get asked that question a lot. You know, do you have, you know, do you have PTSD? Do you have any of that? And I was like, you know, I'm, no, not really. And, uh, you know, for, for a while it was, it was tough to answer like why I, I don't have that or, or why I wasn't afflicted in that way. And I, ultimately I think it comes down to hope. Uh, because I know this isn't the uh, the end all be all of, of of what's supposed to happen, and and uh, uh, how can I use uh, this situation to impact others uh, in a positive way? So yeah, um, and I think if more people looked at it that way, um, that 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 there, I mean, obviously Jesus is the answer, right? So um, if we're if we're looking to Him, um, then then those issues pretty much solve themselves. Yeah, and one of and and Troy, the scripture you just referenced in First Peter, it says in in chapter three, verse fifteen, in, in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for your reason for the hope that is in you, and do it with gentleness and respect. And that that's just exactly what you're talking about. People wonder why. Yeah, yeah. You've I've been through something similar to what you've been through. Yet you you aren't downtrodden you aren't feeling 
bad for your situation. You aren't hopeless. You know why? And be be prepared to answer that. And we should all be behaving in a way. And I know you've been through a lot um, in in a lot of uh, visible ways. You know, people can see uh, some of the some of the difficulty that you you've had. And and the way that you talk about that has always been a blessing. And your life would be completely different if this wouldn't have happened to you. But Troy and I should be living in a way that people are wondering why we're so hopeful as well. You know, because mm-hmm. maybe someday you'll be as good of a shotgunner as me. <laughs> maybe one day I'll buy myself a trophy as big as yours. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. I think I think that's a I think that's a great word, and a lot of people can uh, take that and hopefully uh, gain some positivity uh, with that this week. All as right, they, as they try to live that out. So okay, so if you disagree with us on our uh, top three, let us know. Put it in the comments. Let it, let the world know how you're not right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you have uh, if you have some shotguns that we didn't mention for sure, uh, put those in there because I'm always interested in buying another one. Yeah, add to Matt's collection. There you go. There's there's a few in there. So anyway, who wants to take us out? I think you're signed up to do yeah, it, I'm not but you're not going to do it. I'm not doing it. All right. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to another episode of Hard Headed. You're listening. Brought to you by Admiral's Bennett Beard Oil. Go to admiralspennett.com and buy yourself a bottle. If you're listening to us, please leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're watching us on YouTube or Rumble, don't forget to give us a like, a rumble, and share this video with others. And subscribe. 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 Thank you. We'll see you next time. We're not going to see anybody. They'll see us next time. That's right. You'll hear us too. You definitely hear Chet. Am I loud today? Pop, pop, pop. Hit that record button. (laughs) Oh, man. What? The red button. Push the big red button. Is it not done? I thought I hit it.